I, uh, I shaved, by the way. Um, so anyway, I am all about interoperability. Uh, as a colorist, I have to be. Um, and my presentation tonight will be two parts. Part one, a few boring slides, but of interest, all about interoperability and the new forms of interoperability that are enabled in 8.1, which just came out. And in part two, we're gonna take a look at some grading techniques, some really fun grading techniques enabled by the new uh, grading adjustment feature in 8.1 transfer modes. So I'm gonna go over to my slideshow. Um, I am a little shop. I'm a one-man band. I work in St. Paul right now. And it's to my advantage to be able to work with the most possible clients I can. No matter what workflow they pursue, no matter what NLE they want to use, it's good for me if I can just say yes. I can go ahead and take that project and work on it and give you back what you need, whatever deliverables you want. So I've been joking for a little while now that Resolve is like Switzerland. Um, and that's never been more true than with 8.1. There are several round trip workflows that you can pursue. And while there's a lot of debate in the editorial community about, well, what NLE do I want to use? As a colorist using Resolve, I don't care. Use whatever you want. I can probably ingest your project into my workstation no matter what. Starting with XML. So XML was introduced with 8.0. I showed that off at the London Supermeet. And XML allows you to bring in both Final Cut Pro 7 projects and Premiere Pro projects so long as you update to 5.5.1. So that's a full round trip. You bring your project into Resolve. I grade it. I render out alternate media. And I give you a project to open that media up back in your own editing workstation. Starting in 8.1, there's now an AAF round trip, and it's a full round trip. Uh, so give me an AAF file that references a pile of compatible media. I bring that into Resolve, render out what you want, give you another AAF project, and that picks up the graded media I've given you, and you're ready to go. Both XML and AAF workflows they can do multi-track, composite modes, opacity settings, transitions, and linear speed effects. What's new in 8.1 is I can now import your scale, position, and rotation settings. So if you, as the editor, you're doing some push-ins, you're doing some pan and scan settings, I can now take that in to resolve and grade within context to what you're doing. I may do a different grade if you've pushed in on someone's face than if you've left that a long shot. So that's really beneficial. Furthermore, 8.1 introduces a round trip for Final Cut Pro 10. So if you're an early adopter and you want to use that, you can. And I can work with you and it's a full round trip to resolve and back. And I have to give props to Matthew Murano. If you're on Twitter, he's I love Hugh. Um, I was on the beta for weeks and it never occurred to me to try this out. He's the one who first discovered that you can actually import Final Cut Pro 7 XML and then export Final Cut Pro 10 XML. And you can do this with the light version of DaVinci Resolve, which is a free download. So it doesn't do audio, it only does video, but it gives you a basic ability to upgrade the visual elements of your project, which is great. Again, it's Switzerland. You can come in and go out any way you want. And if you don't have XML and you don't have AAF, I can always take in your EDLs for legacy workflows um, or workflows where that's the uh, project exchange medium of choice. And there's a new ability to insert additional EDLs in superimposed tracks. So you can use that for all different kinds of things, but if you've got a three track project and you can only export EDLs, export three EDLs, and I can put your project back together again. And then lastly, if the only thing you can give me is a media file, you don't have the project, you know, maybe you captured it from tape, from the, the tape master, that's fine too. Give me your compatible media file, 
and I'll go ahead and use DaVinci Resolve's automatic scene detection to chop it up into constituent shots that I can go ahead and grade. So no matter what you give me, I can probably make it work, and that's a great place to be with all the great software that's out there now for editors to use. So at this point, less slides, more grades. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to Resolve itself, and I am gonna go ahead and show you some of the new, let's see, just wanna go ahead and load that. Some of the new techniques that are available using transfer modes in 8.1. So I'm loading an XML project. One thing I wanna call your attention to, there are two new checkboxes, ignore file extensions when matching and use sizing information. If you're giving me an XML project and you've decided to transcode your media as an intermediary step, I can go ahead and use that new media by ignoring the file extension. So that's a nice little workflow. And this is the checkbox that specifies whether or not you want to use sizing information. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to find that media. And it's going to go ahead and load my project. So with that project loaded, I go into the color room where I do all of my fancy color correction. And I am going to jump to this shot. Nice romantic scene, man and a woman. And every good grade starts with a solid foundation of a good primary. So I'm going to go ahead, use the rings to adjust contrast. I'm going to go ahead and use the curves to add a little shadow density. I'll add a little bit of warmth. And now to give it a bit more color contrast, I'm going to jump into my curves. I'm going to pump up the blue in my You sat, you can see the difference before, after, if I reset. And finally, I'll just pump up the red a little teeny tiny bit. And now I've got a really good foundation for my shot. Now the director turns to me and says, I want to do something special with that shot. I want to give it an edge. I want to give it a look. It's a flashback scene. It's a memory, whatever it is. And I say, all right, let's go ahead and use some composite mode. So I'm going to set up a node tree with a couple keystrokes of my DaVinci control surface, cleverly hidden behind the black wall of cloth. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and create, first off, a glow look. It's one of my favorite effects. Uh, it's a good, clean way to get a fast glow. So I'm going to jump into the custom curve. Now, you see I've got two nodes stacked one on top of another, node two and node four. And they're being put together with the layer mixer node. If I right-click on the layer mixer, I have my list of composite modes there. Those are the composite modes available to me. I'm going to go ahead and crush out all of the shadows. I'm going to create a very high contrast version of this image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to add to the original. And what I end up with is a really nice, hot glow. And moreover, it's real time. So I've got a nice hot chromatic glow. If I want it to be more intense, I can turn up the saturation, make all kinds of adjustments. So that's one possible look. My client says, show me something else. So I add a version. This time, I desaturate it completely. And maybe I go ahead and ease off that shadow crushing. So now what I've got is more of a luminosity glow. Again, completely real time. And because I'm spawning versions, I can go back and forth and see how the look compares. The client says, show me something new. So I add another version. This time I'm going to add an additional node. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to colorize that glow layer. So now I've got this really nice, warm, uh, uniform glow, and if I jump between versions, I now have three completely different types of glows, very fast to create, all using composite modes. So the client says, show me something else. So I add another version. I'm going to go ahead and delete this setup. 
start from scratch, add another layer node. Um, Trish Meyer popularized a look she called instant sex. It's a very popular technique. That's something that I can now do here. And in, the way instant sex works is basically I jump into that alternate layer and I blur it. I give it a nice blur and then I right click on the layer mixer node and I choose overlay. And in one fell swoop, the mathematical combination that I get between those two layers gives me really dense shadows, it pumps up the saturation, and it also knocks the edge off any potential harshness in the video. Now, a little bit of this goes a long way. Maybe this is too much. I can jump into the key tab and use this post-mixing gain slider to mix the effect down. So I can have as little or as much of that effect as I want. So that's another look. Client says, show me something else. This is a really bossy client. <laughs> so I add another version. This time I reset that post-mixing slider. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the blur up all the way. And I'm going to use a different transfer mode on the same layers. I'm going to use darken. And I like to call this uh, a, a cartoon look, because what you end up getting are kind of nice illustrator-like lines around the fine de detail of the image. And where there are flat blends of color, they tend to flatten out even more, look soft. Again, this is a real-time operation. So I can show my client how the scene's going to look with this applied whenever I want. Client says, OK, that's great but I want to do a title treatment. So show me something even more bizarre. And I go, OK, I can do that. Add another version. And this time what I'm going to do is reset that node. I'm going to set the layer mixer to the default normal setting. And I'm going to jump up to node 2 and make a little space, because I'm going to be adding a few more nodes. So one thing that's fun to do to create a massive tint in an image is to use a composite mode, one of several, to combine a flat field of color with your image. Now, there's no flat field of color node in Resolve, but I can fake it by blowing out the color in node 2. And then I can go into my clips and crop out any out of bounds data so it doesn't come back to haunt me. I add a serial node, and now what I can do is throw that field of color to anything I want. And now that I've got my field of color going, I can right click on the layer mixer node, and I can say, screen it. And that's a really nice light treatment. You can throw text over this. I can modify it in a variety of different ways. That's a good starting point. Another look that I've seen on some commercials out there is a gradiated tint. And that's also really easy for me to set up. I'll go ahead and jump into my Window tab, turn on a linear window or shape, and I can go ahead and limit that tint I'm giving. I'm going to really soften it out. And now that I've done that, I'm going to add an outside node. And that outside node, kind of awkwardly placed, but I don't have enough space here, allows me to operate on everything outside of that first shape that I created. So now I can go ahead and add a nice blue to the bottom. And I have this nice gradient at play. Again, it's all real time. And that's another potentially nice look. So I've just created a whole bunch of different looks, all used compositing modes. But one thing that a lot of colorists, myself included, do is to build up a library of effects. You don't always want to have to reinvent the wheel every time you create an interesting effect. So if I want to add this to my library, what I can do is I can switch to the Power Grade tab, which shows saved grades that are available to every project I open up. And I can go back here and get rid of the initial base grade node, that, that primary correction I did in node 1. Now that I've set that up, I can grab a still, 
And I can go to any other shot in the project, say this one. Um, I'll give it a really quick base grade. Maybe I'll warm it up a little bit. And what I can do is if I want to add that crazy effect to the end of whatever tree of grades I've created here, I can right click and choose Append Node Graph. And it's going to stick that effect after the end of the original grade I created for that shot. So very flexible. The whole tool set enables me to work as quickly as I possibly can because clients want to get in and get out and get going with their lives. And uh, there you go. So hope that was fun and you were a great audience. Thanks a lot.